Hari Om Swamiji. Uh, Sanket here. Oh, yes. Please. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, one is regarding uh, using the concepts of Prakriti and Purush, uh, which are like the Pradhan concepts of Sankhya philosophy. Uh, yeah, okay. By using them in Advaita framework, how are we able to maintain the non-duality? Uh, when we are when we are uh, in some way accepting the uh, that prakriti is separate from Brahman, that is one. Correct. And and second question is regarding Ishvara. So when we say Ishvara is impersonal, that is uh, he doesn't have a form. Uh, mm -hmm. Are are we implying here a nirgun nirakar Ishwar? And then if if we are uh, implying that. Uh, what is the position of Sagun Sakar uh, Ishwar Correct. in the framework? Yeah. Yeah. Good questions. Uh, yeah. So, first I will take up the difference between Sankhya and Vedanta. Now, I think uh, from your uh, question, I could understand that you have some basic idea of Sankhya philosophy. In Sankhya philosophy, Prakriti is individual. It means Prakriti has its own characteristics and Prakriti is totally different from consciousness. So they are two. That duality is there ultimately in, in all of forms. The consciousness has no direct connection with the Prakriti in Sankhya philosophy. So consciousness is independent and the Prakriti is also independent. So they call Purusha and Prakriti. And uh, the other thing is Prakriti is the creator there in Sankhya. The whole creation is because of Prakriti. The material cause is also Prakriti. The creator, the Kartri, is Prakriti only. But the Purusha, the consciousness, is not doing anything. The consciousness is not doer. No enjoyer, nothing. Consciousness has its own existence, that's all. In the presence of consciousness, Prakriti does the creation. So that is the basic theory of Sankhya. So when uh, a seeker, a mumukchu, can uh, Discriminate Prakriti and Purusha, separate. Prakriti is different from Purusha. The characteristics of Prakriti and the characteristics of Purusha are separately known. With that discrimination, he gets Moksha, Kaivalya. That is the theory there. But in Vedanta, what we say, this Prakriti is identical with Purusha. It means Purusha is the consciousness. When it becomes a creative power, this is the idea uh, we discussed here. When the creation starts, or we have to make a cause for creation. Because every creation, there must be a cause. Without cause, creation cannot happen. So seeing the effect, we infer the cause there. We assume the cause there. If the effect is this, then cost must be the that. 
when we taste a sweet, so we know this sweet is made of uh, sugar or jaggery or what something else. So this is the connection. Similarly, here in this world, we see all the forms of prakriti in triguna, sattva, rajas, tamas. Manifestation in many forms, the multitude manifestation that consists of three gunas, sattva, rajas, tamas. And therefore, this, the cause of this creation must be with sattva, rajas, tamas. And this sattva, rajas, tamas independently cannot create anything. In this world, when we see the creation, the, the unconscious entity cannot manifest itself. That is what we see. It needs a back force, back some power from outside. Now, when we say what is inert, Inert meat which cannot move its own. It needs some power behind. Then only it can move. So that is what we call Jada. So the whatever we see in this creation, everything is created. It means behind this creation there is a material cause which is Prakriti. And the efficient cause which gives the power to this prakriti. Therefore, it is identical. For example, the fire and its burning capacity. The fire is different and fire burns. The element of burning in uh, in that uh, fire. Now, how we can separate this fire is different and the burning capacity of fire is different. The heat inside. Because if the fire is there, if we can uh, use uh, uh, some uh, jacket or something the special jacket now nowadays this fire people has they use that jacket and enter into the fire so that fire cannot burn that jacket the special special jacket and there are medicines in ayurveda and uh, in uh, no in india previously uh, people were using that medicine to protect fire. So they use the, that medicine in their hands and like that. It is a, it is a uh, herb no, that they make from that, some leaves. So after using that medicine, you can put your hand in, into fire, it will not burn. So it is said in Ayurveda and other tests. So mantra and aushadi. Now herbs and mantra can protect or prevent the burning power of fire. It's possible. It's a technique used. So it means the fire and burning power is different, but they are one. Because this burning power is there only when the fire is there. The burning fire is there only there when the fire is there. The same thing is here. Purusha prakriti sthohi. Purusha prakriti sthaha. The consciousness is there in Prakriti. Bhunje Prakriti Jan Gunan. Prakriti Jan Gunan, all these Trikunas, he enjoys. 
So this is the connection Purusha and Prakriti. Mayam to Prakriti Vidyat, Mayinam to Maheshwaram. So this is how we say that Prakriti, Maya and Purusha consciousness is the same. Now the other point in Vedanta, Maya is the material cause and the creator efficient cause as uh, Ishvara. But this is only for the sake of teaching Vedantic evolutionary theory. It is not ultimate. It's just to teach how it comes out, how this world appears. So this is how it is, uh, we can say that the difference between Sankhya philosophy and Vedantic philosophy. So ultimate there is, ultimately there is no difference with the Maya and the Maya, uh, Purusha. So in uh, Mandukya Kariga, it is directly said Satya Maya Na Vidyate. Uh, we take Maya as the material cause of creation, but really speaking, there is no Maya as such. Separate from Ishwara, separate from uh, the Parabrahma, Shuddha Brahma. And therefore, this Ishwara is called. Qualified Brahma. As you ask, there are, there are gunas in Ishwara. So now, this Ishwara is not pure consciousness, pure existence, but this Ishwara is qualified Brahman. Qualified Brahman for creation. This is another technical term used for Ishwara. Shabala Brahma. We say Shabala Brahma, qualified Brahma. So Ishwara has gunas, but no forms. So what, what are the gunas? That like just now we have seen that Sarvatnyaha, Sarvashaktiman, Omnipersant, Omnipotent, and Omniscient. So these are the qualities of Ishwara. So this Ishwara is qualified consciousness in Vedanta. So the qualification comes from Maya, that's all. So we will discuss this later uh, with more elaboration because the test itself will discuss all these subjects.